So with Photoshop 2021, we have a new filter, which is called Neural Filter. And in there we have the Style Transfer section, which so far I didn't really find too many useful applications of this. So in this video, I wanna kind of show how you can use the Style Transfer tool. I know it's still in the beta phase and I hope Photoshop will improve on this because there are a lot of uh, good, tools out there, not made by Photoshop, but that basically apply the same logic and do a way better job. And it's so much fun once you, once it does a good job, it's so much fun to come up with ideas what you can combine with what. In Photoshop, it's not necessarily very useful at the moment, but still to show you some useful applications that I found, um, I made this video and I hope you can start experimenting with them and hopefully it will get better in the future. So let's head into the video. So here we are in Photoshop 2021. If you go to filter and you have the neural filters here, that means you're already in 2021. And if we click on here, depending on what kind of image you have here, you have different options. And here we have the style transfer option. And basically what the style transfer is supposed to do, it looks at your picture and it tries to imagine the same picture painted by someone that uses this style, basically. Now, my issue with it is that it doesn't look like a painting with that style applied to it at all. Pretty much every photo you load into this looks the same. It just looks like you just applied a filter to it and there is no nothing interesting about it there's nothing special about it um, you know the strokes are not really adjusted to how to the curves of my head they just all go straight up also when i you know go to the famous van gogh painting it doesn't look like this style at all you know what i would wish for is um, the way this mist kind of twirls in the original painting that you would see this with the hair for example or with the pillars here in the background so it doesn't really do a very good job with it at all so with actual pictures I didn't really find a lot of applications because as I said it just looks like you applied a filter that influences color and makes it kind of messy um, but what you can do with it, um, if you go through it and experiment a little bit, um, you could use this as an overlay, as a blend mode. Um, for example, if I go here to the matrix section or whatever we want to call this, let's, let's go here. Let's take this one, for example, and I just press OK. And we have this on a new layer and I could just change the blend mode to something and like this add some interesting textures to my pictures. And obviously, as always, you can erase the effect and then apply it to very specific parts of your image. So like this, you could possibly use an effect like this on an image. So it's actually somewhat useful. Uh, you can also do this with um, something that adds more color to it. So I have on TikTok, I have a little tutorial how to uh, make an image look like you painted someone's skins with actual uh, color, colorful makeup and so on. And some of these effects kind of lead into the style. Uh, let me find what could look good. Let's go for this one here. So here we have very, very weird colors. Down here we can also, you know, use the style strength, see how much it influences it. Now you see the ceiling, for example, up here um, has gotten quite a few nice shades of colors. Um, if we press OK here, you could target specifically this area, you know, by adding a little bit of a soft light there, maybe blur it even, and you could just blend me out here. Well, I would use, I would have to use a different brush, but still you get the idea. Or we could just go to something that looks a little bit more painted. Here we go, let's take this for example. So we press OK. We can play with the blend modes as always, but we could also 
try to go to the blending options and only apply it to the highlights. Makes the picture a lot more interesting. And then you could again invert this and now we use a brush here and we try to just paint in a few things here. And to make the whole thing a little bit more realistic, again, we can change the blend mode here. And then it could actually look like I've painted this skin here. Obviously, I'm not spending too much time on how accurate this effect is. And the other thing you could do, you could take the actual picture and displace it with a displacement map. And hopefully like this, the strokes adjust a little bit more to the shape of your head and your fingers and so on. So when you use a blend mode, it doesn't look like you just used straight strokes from the top to the bottom here. Also with the same thing in mind, you could obviously choose different styles to make like an overlay for a poster or something where you include a picture. So for things like this, the styles are kind of useful because with a few clicks you can bring some colors and bring some abstract layers into your picture, but still it's quite unimpressive. Now, the thing that it works better with is actual illustrations. So for example, I have a sketch here that I scanned into Photoshop and now it's just a plain uh, black and white picture. And if you go to the neural filters now and you apply the style transfer, you can come up with some cool ideas. Again, it doesn't look great, but it applies color and it applies some abstract strokes to it. So just by applying a filter like this, you could add some color to your illustration and make it look a little bit more artsy than before. Now, once we're done, you can always duplicate this and apply a new filter to it and then start using blend modes or decrease one layer a little bit or maybe even take one and drag it out a bit to have like an abstract wobbly effect or you could even bring a second illustration into the picture here for example it looks really cool that you see the lines here stick out more than before in the black and white version and this looks like, you know, the colors are very intentional. So with actual drawings, it works quite nicely. Now you can also use it on designs you already made, you know, like abstract designs, for example, this one that I have here. If I go to the neural filters again, just to add a little bit of interest and shine to it. Let's see what we find. For example, this one here, now it looks very 80s. And if we press OK, we could leave it like this and add some fonts to it. Or again, change the blend mode to add a little bit more shine to it. Or you can even blur it to make it a bit softer for the glow effect. Or you can do this with abstract work as well. And in this case, I feel like the less detailed the whole images, the better it works. So I go to filter gallery real quick and just make the whole image harder. And then we have the same, same thing again. And again, with this, you could make a poster easily. But then again, this poster is just kind of an accident. You can't really say I intended to make this because it just happened to look good. While a lot of other styles just don't really happen to look good. Now, other than that, I didn't really find a lot of applications for the style transfer mode in Photoshop. If you guys found anything that is useful or that you really enjoy doing with this new uh, option, let me know because I'm very curious. Maybe I missed something that um, would be very, very useful. As always, write it in the comments. I'm very eager to learn about applications and how to use this filter. Thanks for watching and more is coming soon.